We don't know for sure. We know that God gave Hezekiah 15 years, and we know that, that uh, Manasseh was 12 years old when he followed his father and took the throne after Hezekiah died. We know Hezekiah had 15. That means Manasseh was born three years after, after he was healed. Some of you can appreciate the significance of that because you know the history. Others of you might not really appreciate the significance. Let me quickly tell you, Manasseh is the king that God names as the reason Judah goes into captivity. And isn't it interesting, he was born three years after Hezekiah was healed. We don't know how long Hezekiah's backsliding went on. We know he repented, we're told that. But we don't know if he repented maybe a year, two years, five years before he died, or if he repented immediately after this thing with, uh, with uh, the Babylonians happened. It doesn't look like that, though, to me. When you read, after Isaiah comes to him with that rebuke, you, hear, you know what Hezekiah says? Oh, that's good news. It won't happen while I'm alive. Yeah, yeah, well, I, I didn't mention this, did I? Hezekiah comes back, and, and I mean, uh, Isaiah comes back to Hezekiah and says, Hey, you blew it, right? I mentioned that. You, everything they saw, they're going to take. And then he goes on to say, but the, the, the prophecy won't be fulfilled in your days. The prophecy will be fulfilled later on. And Hezekiah says, good, dodge that bullet. Does that sound like a humble? No, that sounds like a prideful person. It seems to me he was still in his prideful state at that time. And I don't know how long that, that pride held on to his heart. Obviously, a lot of chastening came into his life during this period of time. And somewhere along the way, he did humble himself. But let's just think about this for a moment. What happened to Manasseh? How did he lose Manasseh? Now, whether or not Hezekiah remained backslidden through the early formative years and the development of Manasseh, which would be from about, I mean, the mother's influence in forming and shaping the child's spirit and attitude is dominant in the first five years. Dad's influence takes over from about five years old through about 10 or 11. And then it's dad and mom a little bit, and then it becomes mom and then back to dad. It's interesting how that develops. And by the way, this is not an exact science, so it's, it, it's not like you don't need mom after five years old. It's... Not hardly, okay. But my point is, the formative years of a child's development, where, they're, where that formation is, is impacted mostly by the dad, is from about five years old through 11 or 12, sometimes all the way through the teen years. But, uh, so we don't know. If Hezekiah was backslidden, and in his backslidden condition, he communicated a perverse spirit to Manasseh, and that's what opened Manasseh up for the sins he fell into later on. We don't know that. We don't know if possibly what happened is this. Because Hezekiah opened the doors of his kingdom to Babylon and allowed these ambassadors to come in and establish probably some reciprocation between his country and that country, if perhaps the corruptions of Babylon began to influence the culture of Judah, and that's very, very reasonable to... to uh, to suggest because, as a matter of fact, when Manasseh becomes king at the young age of 12 years old, he immediately begins following the pattern of the Babylonians. So somewhere along the line here, he got influenced by the Babylonian culture and became enamored of it. And the point I'm making is there's a reason that God was unhappy with Hezekiah for allowing the ambassadors of Babylon to come in and as it were, spy out the land. And the reason was because, I'm sure, that God knew that that would open the gates of the culture of God's people to the culture of the heathen. And that's exactly what did happen. And when Manasseh comes on the scene, this man was the most wicked king Judah ever had, and actually Manasseh was more wicked than any king of Israel ever. I mean, you, he was worse than Ahab, and everybody knows that Ahab was bad news. I mean, Jezebel and all that, but Manasseh was twofold times evil, more evil than, than even Ahab. 
As a matter of fact, God says as much, and he says that the reason that Judah is cast off into judgment finally to the Babylon, to the Babylonians, the reason is it's because of the sins of Manasseh. How did Hezekiah lose his son? When he opened the doors of his kingdom to Babylon. In a time of pride of heart. When the Lord had left him. And so that's basically the message. I want you to understand something. Uh, you, you might be praying. As I challenge you, pray and be available to God to be blessed. But I also warn you, there's, a, there's some challenges with that. There's some responsibility that comes with that. And I'll guarantee you, if God does put blessing in your life that way, there will be, <laughs> the ambassadors from Babylon will be knocking on your door to bring in the corruptions of the world into your home and into your life. And just as with the issue of Thanksgiving, this is, there's also a very practical side to this. When you do have a lot more in the way of riches and wealth and everything, it's, you have a lot, it's a lot easier for you to bring the world into your life. It's just a lot easier. The gates are open. And the world can flood in much more easily. I've talked to more than one person over the years who realized and lamented later on and, and even said things like, you know, I just wasn't ready for the, 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 how, how many temptations there are when you, when you have riches. I just wasn't ready for it. I had one guy tell me that. He, he got it straightened out later on. This, this is one of those guys, you've heard these stories, these people who become millionaires and then broke and then millionaires and broke. You and I wonder, what in the world is that about? You can't even do it once. But there are guys out there like that. They just, they, for some reason, they got something going on and they know how to make this thing happen. <laughs> and they, they do that. And he was one of those kinds of people. And, uh, and he realized that, that, that what was happening to him is that when he had the ride up, when he was focused on the ride up, he's all concentrated and working and disciplined. When he hits the, the, the mark and he's got all these riches and everything, he kind of relaxes and then all of a sudden he comes under the power of so many temptations and so many things it just unravels. It all comes apart under his feet. Amen. And you got to watch out for that. The Bible talks about the deceitfulness of riches and the fact that there's a lot of temptation associated with that. Uh, if you have a lot of riches, you, then you have, it's easier for you to, to answer the door. First of all, you'll have a whole line of ambassadors from Babylon at your door. Wanting to introduce you to something. Wanting to present something to you. Wanting to bring you over into something. You'll be amazed. It's like they have some kind of radar. And they just zoom, zero in on you. And they'll line up at your door and the ambassadors of Babylon will be knocking on your door. Well, you've got to be very, very careful right there. So what you need to do, if God does open a window of heaven, of heaven open the windows of heaven for you, <laughs> that was, wow, that was hard to say. <laughs> If God opens up the windows of heaven for you and pours out a blessing, you don't have enough room to receive it, and you, you're going through one of those periods in your life where it's just like it's all coming together and God's blessing, you're pouring out His blessing, and we're all going, wow, can't wait for that to happen. Let me tell you something. You better be ready. Because if that happens, and you let your heart rise up and lift up in pride, you're going to get slammed. God's going to resist the proud. Amen. He'll step back. And the ambassadors from Babylon will be knocking on your door. And the father will be good looking. And oh boy, this is not a good time to have pride. This is not a good, you need to humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. And you know what? The best way to make sure you stay humble during a time of blessing? Be thankful. 